Good morning, happy Friday. I have Neuro Coffee in hand and it is perfect. Wow, Dr. Mike, well done. Uh, wow, a great Friday, it's been a great week. Um, the clinic was, was busy this week, so a lot of fun there. And then got a lot done, talked to a lot of good people. Um, so I'm having a blast, I'm taking this opportunity. Um, with the weird schedules and stuff to, to actually uh, stay in touch with a lot of a lot of good people, a lot of smart people too. So I'm having fun. Um, today's Q and A is a little bit different. So I'm going to start here. We're going to do a little intro thingy that I'm doing right now, and I need a better representative model. So I got to run over to the purple room and and shoot the rest of this. The thing that we're going to talk about today is is respecting the initial conditions. Of, of how someone presents in regards to table tests because I had, I had a bunch of questions that came through in regards to interpretation of table tests. We had a thing that happened in the intensive group that was a question came up where we had a symmetrical measure that was not symmetrical. And, and so we're gonna talk about that today, which is actually kind of a, a cool thing to, to understand because I, I think a lot of people um, misinterpret some, some tests when they see equivalent measures on, on both sides of the body, they're making an assumption that the same thing is happening and it's not. So with that in mind, I'm gonna cut away. We're gonna go to the purple room. Um, have a great Friday. I will see you guys later. There'll be some stuff coming up. Um, the, the podcast will be up this weekend, things like that. Instagram will be busy as usual. And then please send questions to askbillhartman at gmail.com, askbillhartman at gmail.com or post them up on Instagram. I will see you guys at the Purple Room in just a sec. So I got a question from Jennifer, and then we had a situation that came up in the intensive Facebook group that I thought would be a really good Q&A to answer here in the Purple Room, and I'm gonna use Alfred here as, as our, our model, which he is. He is a representative model of, of a skeleton, and one of the assumptions I think that, that confounds people, especially when they're doing table tests and we have the constraint of the table, is not getting an idea of what this initial representation is. Some people, and, and I think this is one of those situations where when you first come out of physical therapy school or however you're, you've been educated, is that we're taught this this dead guy anatomical position and the assumption is is that when you lay in the table that's the position i'm actually starting in and it's not even close to that representation i'm, I'm going to use alfred sort of to, to, to demonstrate this and, and so one of the things that i want you to recognize is that yes the table provides this constraint to measure against but as someone is laying on the table we cannot make the assumption that they're in some magical position where everything is even and we have this equal starting point so i can do something as simple as turning Alfred's head, and if you look down at his feet or at his legs, I'm actually changing his leg length just by turning his head. And obviously you can see that I moved the thorax and the shoulders a whole lot more because they're a little bit closer to the head, but I'm even manipulating his leg length and foot position just by changing the orientation of his head. So right away, just consider the fact that if I have a patient or a client laying on the table and I'm making the assumption that, that this is somehow even, if they have their head turned slightly just to, to one side, I've immediately changed the starting conditions for all of my tests. This is why getting a, a full chessboard, a full measurement of, of orientations and positions helps you determine what the next intervention should be. So now let's talk about a specific test like the straight leg raise and how this situation of the initial conditions can influence your interpretation of the test. So if I measure a straight leg raise test, and let's just say that Alfred has about 70, 80 degrees here, and I raise this leg and I get 70 to 80 degrees here. If my assumption is that he's somehow magically laying on the table in this perfectly even dead guy anatomical position, I would have to say that, well, both, both hips are showing me the exact same measure, so my assumption is, is that orientations, positions, um, muscle activity is equal on both sides. However, I can't make that assumption because I can't rely on that one singular test. One is a representation of position. So all I would have to do is tilt his pelvis on an oblique axis and I've changed the initial conditions. So I've reoriented 
both of the acetabulum, both of the hip sockets have changed position. Now when I raise up this leg to 70 degrees, I have a totally different orientation of the hip than I have on this side to get the 70 to 80 degrees. So if this hip is already beginning in a more flexed position because the orientation of the pelvis started him in hip flexion, if they end in the same place, I actually have more hip flexion on this side than I had on this side. So if I make the assumption that both sides are equal, my intervention may fail simply because my interpretation was wrong to begin with. So I have to take into consider these initial conditions. How do you do this? Well, that's why we measure all the other movements and then we create a three-dimensional or four-dimensional picture in our head as to what the orientation of the body is in space. Then we can be a little bit more secure in our decision making in regard to the interventions that we'll choose because our, we've narrowed the probabilities of what's actually going on. We can't have a faulty assumption that everybody's starting from this ideal position like we learned in school because that really doesn't exist. And so again, take into consideration initial starting conditions and then the representation of the end conditions, and then that's going to allow you to determine where things are in space, narrow down your probabilities, and your interventions will be much more successful.